Okay, so again, welcome everyone. We're going to have a, a joint workshop this afternoon um, looking at um, ways that faculty can find and adopt open educational resources. Um, I'll show a few slides to begin with just to um, provide some uh, framework around the idea of open educational resources. And then we will um, uh, go into the nuts and bolts of um, how the Follett Discover system works. Uh, that'll be a good chunk of the first half of the of the workshop. And then I will um, come back and uh, talk about some options through SUNY OER services and other sites for looking for either fully um, open textbooks or you know individual open educational resources. So with that, let me um, let me share my screen. And Marie, if you could uh, bump up uh, both Bruce, I think Patrick is still co-host, but if you could bump them up both up to co-host so they can sure. share. Sure, no problem. So let's... Get rid of some things I don't need here. And um, don't think I'm going to um, necessarily go full screen on my slides. Uh, I think we can get by without it. Let me just again um, put into the chat the uh, bit.ly link for uh, the slides that I'll be using. Um, so I wanted to start off with just a little bit of a framework around open educational resources. Many of you are probably already familiar with this, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, what we're talking about with open educational resources are really, it's not necessarily synonymous with free resources. Open educational resources are really defined by these very specific uh, rights that are given um, and are associated with, uh, with OERs. And uh, they're usually thought of in terms of these five R's. You know, as faculty and students, well, as anyone uh, who are um, accessing these OERs, we have the ability to retain them. That is, there, our, our access to the resources don't go away at the end of the semester because some purchase code has gone away. We can reuse them in any kind of way that we want. The nice thing, the really powerful thing about uh, OER materials uh, is that uh, as content creators, whether we're talking about faculty or students, we have the ability to revise them. So, you know, that, that open textbook might not be quite right on a particular topic. Um, because it's OER licensed, you as faculty members have the ability to go in and revise it. We can remix, we can combine different openly licensed materials together and then share them back to the community by redistributing them. I'll be talking mostly about openly licensed textbooks today because that's a very easy way for faculty to get involved as we'll see in a, in a bit. But I did want to point out that there are all different types of resources that can be openly licensed. Um, lots of different kinds of documents, animations, simulations, websites, open textbooks, of course, open courseware, which kind of overlaps to some extent with the open textbooks I'll be talking about, learning objects, and so forth. And um, again, we're not, I won't go into this in great detail, but mostly these resources have a Creative Commons license. If you're not familiar with Creative Commons licensing, it's sort of um, an in-between between, between public domain and commercial copyright. Uh, with uh, commercial copyright, I'm a content creator. I, by um, default, my materials are, are um, I own the rights to them. Creative Commons is a way for us as content creators to say, yes, this is my material. I still maintain ownership of it, but I'm going to tell you the conditions under which I'm going to allow you to use it. And I'm going to tell you that up front so that you don't have to come back to me later and try to seek permission to use something after the fact. Um, 
Yeah, we won't go through all of the different flavors of Creative Commons licensing, but the most, uh, the least restrictive is just uh, CC BY license, Creative Commons license, where I give you my stuff to use in any way and reuse and remix in any way you want. All I ask is that you retain, you give me credit for the original production of it. Um, just quickly want to go through uh, what this means from a student perspective. Um, of course, students are very interested in the cost of textbooks. And so a lot of the kind of superficial discussion around open educational resources is focused on, well, let's, let's try to save students money. And students clearly don't mind uh, saving money. But uh, just as important is that um, the fact that these are openly licensed, the fact that faculty can deploy them uh, um, automatically in their courses really provides much greater access to our students to these materials, which in turn um, promotes student success in a number of ways. A lot of studies have shown that when students take courses that are built around OER materials in one semester, they tend to persist in those courses more. Um, because they don't have to worry about getting the textbook. They don't have to worry about, they can't get the textbook until week six of the class when their uh, you know, financial aid comes in. Um, so those successes um, you know, allow students to take more classes, to allow them to graduate on time in a, in a better fashion and, and really have some important equity issues um, for our students. I think from a faculty perspective, um, those are all important things. I mean, we, we tend to have a lot of concern for our students. So to be able to, um, you know, provide equitable access uh, to support our student success and save the money at the same time is important to us. But I think as a faculty, we have some other things to consider. Um, open educational resources, because we can revise and remix and reuse them however we want provides us more control over the curriculum. It's not like I'm having my students buy a $200 textbook and I have to feel that I'm locked into covering all the content in the textbook because why else would I you know, have my students buy that? It makes it easier for us to, um, to have our classes function well when we know that our students can all have access to the materials from day one or before when the class starts and not have to worry about when students are going to get uh, commercial text to come in. And uh, what's very exciting for me is that oftentimes open educational resources are also tied in with various open pedagogy projects that uh, where we can involve our students in actually co-creating and co-curating uh, course materials. Uh, again, that's not the direct focus of the of the workshop today, but I think it's important to put out there. Um, from an institutional perspective, uh, I will just say that um, faculty adoption of OER materials and how that feeds into the student success initiatives and uh, and these equity issues and and the ability to support a really inclusive. Um, approach to instruction. That is very important to the administration here at Purchase. It's important um, at, at uh, SUNY System. And as we'll see later in my stuff uh, in the second half, um, you, SUNY has put a lot of funding and support into OER materials. And then my last um, thing, I just want to comment that I mean, mostly we're, we're pursuing the, the faculty perspective today. And for the faculty who are on the call or for the librarians who are working with faculty, I just want to point out that there is this continuum of adopt of, of how faculty can get involved with um, using OER materials in their courses. The most straightforward thing is just to adopt existing OER materials. And again, that's... I guess that's mostly what I'm going to be focused on. I don't know, Wayne, if that's uh, mostly what you're going to be focusing on. How can um, faculty find openly licensed materials that they can just plug into their courses? 
Um, we oftentimes find that as faculty get more comfortable with using openly licensed materials, they begin to think about how they can actually take those materials that they've found, which are pretty good or, you know, high quality, but maybe not directly the focus that I want to use and, and adapt them because the licensing allows me to adapt them. And then we have probably a very small percentage of faculty who actually want to go out and, and build uh, OER materials from scratch, but we do have some. Um, so with that framework, let me stop sharing. Um, let me see if uh, there are any quick questions at this point. If not, uh, Wayne, I think I'll turn it over to you to uh, uh, take... Keith, I'm, I'm not able to assign co-hosts. I'm not sure why. So you may need to enable okay. that on your end. Thanks. So, okay. So Wayne, let me find you here in the list. And so you're now a co-host. And you should be able to do any sort of screen sharing that you want to do. And Patrick, um, I'll go in and make you co-host as well. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep, we hear you, Wayne, thanks. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, well, first off, my name is Wayne Beach, and thanks so much for allowing me to be here. Uh, I appreciate uh, the chance to discuss our faculty discover tool, and that's what I'm gonna show you. It's a fairly simple tool to utilize, so I don't uh, expect this to take an inordinate amount of time, um, but uh, we do want to show that it is something that's available to you right now to be able to utilize. And as uh, Keith had mentioned, um, there are open education resources that are available that will also be available within the File Discover platform for you to utilize uh, as you will. Um, I'm going to share my screen here so I can give you a kind of a kick the tires look and feel of the File Discover uh, platform. And let's see. I can share my desktop. There we go. Okay. Okay, let me know if you can see the screen. Yep, we've got it, Wayne. Thanks. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so first off, where this is located, this is located, uh, we do have this integrated with the LMS, the campus LMS, which I believe is Moodle. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yep, we've got a link to Full Discover on the front page of our Moodle site that um, anyone can click on. Okay, so uh, so basically it is uh, integrated uh, in, with an LTI link. So basically what that means is that uh, if, uh, if uh, Keith is signing in and he's teaching some classes, it's gonna recognize that Keith, that Keith is teaching uh, three classes. Um, and it's gonna put those classes right into his dashboard uh, when he logs into File and Discover. So, this is kind of, this is what you're going to see. This is a uh, a demo site here, so it's going to, the same look and feel as what you're going to experience when you're logged into File and Discover on your side. Um, and just to give you a little quick tour here, uh, the File Discover icon up here will always take you back to this home screen right here, no matter where you are in the uh, in the platform. Uh, you'll see that there's an option to select your terms because we do sometimes have multiple terms rolling. I know some folks are teaching summer classes, but then also are preparing for fall uh, so that you have the ability to select the term that you're working in uh, and update it. And it will pull the classes that you are teaching for that term uh, and put them right down below in your, uh, in your dashboard view here. Um, there is a very, very quick keyword search right up above here that you can utilize for ISBNs, author titles. I mean, this, uh, what I'm gonna focus on is the open education resources, but this also has access to over 7,000 publishers, um, a lot of content, uh, and open education resources also, Lumen open education resources. Uh, and I think that, uh, I think that Keith will probably get into a little bit of that because I know that there is a, a partnership with uh, Lumen uh, through open uh, SUNY. So, um, those are also housed within here. They can be uh, uh, linked to and, and grabbed. But basically what this, what this tool is used for is, is finding your course materials, assigning your course materials to your class. And then once it's assigned to your class, that information is passed directly to the store. So the store knows it, it's updated to the website. The website knows it. 
um, and your students can access it. So if you're, ac if you're actually assigning open education resources through this platform, they will be able to access it as well uh, through, their, through their login. So they have a login as well. and We have a uh, follow discover uh, side uh, that's student facing where their course materials, uh, open education resources that have been assigned them would be accessible in one dashboard. So looking down here, just a good quick navigation here, and it is fairly simple. I see that I've got a map uh, down below here that I was teaching a map 1498. You'll see I can select that I have no materials for this course if I'd like, or I could select discover for this course uh, to look at the master title database and sort and filter uh, for the materials that I'm looking for. Uh, Keith had mentioned also that uh, some, some, fo some folks might be going down the road at some point of, of utilizing open education resources, maybe adding to them. Um, creating their own open education resources. We do have links with with content creators uh, that you can also link to here down at the bottom. Um, I think we work with Xanadu that also publishes and uh, and uh, distributes open education resources. Again, there is there is fees involved because there is production involved if you're using if you're looking for hard copies and things like that. But this is also an opportunity that's available at your fingertips. If you clicked on the follow this, if you click clicked on the discover for this course you'll see that it'll bring back all the results that we have in there but you also see that there are tabs over here that you can select from uh, for publisher materials supplies and open education resources you click on the open education resources and it will filter by those resources for you uh, and within, within the platform we have between and 20,000 open education resources that are available. You can view the details just by clicking on them. Uh, we have several uh, several users in there. And, and, and again, I think this was already alluded to. It's not just print material. Sometimes it's the Stanford video channel. Um, there's materials that are, that, are, that are videos. There's materials that are print. Um, and it's all accessible here. You can view the details. You can review it and look at it and decide what it is that you want to do um, just by clicking on the actual the, uh, the actual item here. Uh, you can choose to have this adapted to your course just by clicking the adopt button. And again, our store manager, Cairo, will receive a notification that you've adopted this material. It'll be showing on the website It'll that, that there's open education resources that have been assigned for this class and the students will have access to it on their digital bookshelf. You have an ability right here to access the materials as well, if you'd like. Uh, to see what they look like, what these are, take a read. It'll flick you right to the uh, materials. Um, and for some reason, my I just went down on this here. I don't know why. Hopefully, I've got everybody here still. Um, yeah, you're still here. You're still with us, Wayne. Okay. Sorry about that. It just kicked me out for some reason. So. Were there any questions right now? What they've seen so far? Because um, also, it's your it's your purchase single sign on. They'll get you into the system. It'll recognize who you are and bring up your classes if they've been assigned in the system. Yeah, I mean, I I, I kind of showed you the quick tour already. Um, okay, so for some reason, my internet connection is 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 giving me some trouble right this moment. Um, okay, and now we're back. It looks like we're back. Um, but I, yeah, again, I, it is fairly simple. The tool is simple to use. It's I, more, than, more than anything, I'm just encouraging you to, to log in and, and check it out and see what's available for you um, in addition to what uh, Keith and, and, and his folks are able to also uh, find for you. But this is a tool that's already in play. That's kind of where I am, and that's, that's what I brought to you today. So the only other thing I'd mention too is obviously, you know, we, we, we want to promote the OER. We also have other options available through the bookstore if there's other course materials you're looking for. And Kyra was on the call. Um, she replaced Tiffany as the bookstore manager uh, last school year. So she's new to the purchase. Unfortunately, her timing came in during the pandemic. So you probably haven't met her yet, but she's on the call and her information is available through the, through the website. Yeah, I th and I, I think um, this brings up some important things. I mean, is um, 
it's one thing to deploy the o OER materials uh, digitally, which is is how they're mostly often deployed. But we, if we look across SUNY, there's oftentimes some uh, interest for among the students for having the the print material as well. And so, depending on the OER you're you're working with and the um, the pathway you get to it, um, you might be um, we might be uh, working with the bookstore to make those print materials available. Actually, uh, you know, Patrick, that's probably a conversation we need to have um, in more depth uh, with some of the materials that I'll be looking at through SUNY OER services. There's also an option to bring um, SUNY Press into the mix. So some different options for, for print. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's a great ad key because it's something that we are doing on some of our other campuses. Uh, where we have aggressive uh, open education resource programs already in play. Uh, but yes, that's absolutely, that's a possibility where we do have some print uh, OERs that are on the shelves. Again, you're looking at maybe a five to $10 uh, course material that's, uh, that's replacing something that traditionally has been $150. So it's still a very, very viable uh, option and a, and a very uh, uh, exciting option for some of our students. Wayne, how much lead time normally do, do you need for, to get those materials printed? I mean, that might be a question people might have. It really depends on who we're actually outsourcing this through. Um, I mean, I, I know on several of our campuses, we have uh, print shops that we partner with on the campus. So it depends on what the campus has to offer. Um, but if we're using Xanadu, Xanadu usually needs, uh, I think, three weeks um, just to be able to ensure that they're they're, you know, because they're going to do double checks on it to make sure that there's no copyright material in it. They have to. It's just a requirement on their end. Um, and then it's just production time and getting it to us. Okay, thank you, Wayne. Is there any other questions? Okay. So let me go ahead and, and uh, share back again. Um, you know, there's some uh, uh, questions in the chat about um, where that, that link for Fullit is. So let me just pull up the home page for Moodle. Um, I'm logged in. And so if I came down here and clicked on uh, this connection between our Moodle system and the Follett Discover platform, as Wayne mentioned, is an LTI connection. LTI is just um, learning tools interoperability. It, it provides a way that our Moodle system can talk to Follett Discover and can pass your information that, you know, who you are, that you're a faculty member, what, and then, and then uh, Follett Discover can pull up the courses. So I'm actually teaching um, a course in the fall. So if I click here, I will see, hopefully, that there's my Search for Life in the Universe course. And um, now I haven't, I haven't actually decided yet how I'm going to handle um, materials for this, but um, I could, I could search for an astrobiology textbook or open education materials um, through the Follett Discover platform here. Okay. So, uh, what I want to do, and and I think we've got plenty of time for this, is um, want to really um, walk you through a little bit of what's available through SUNY OER services. As I did mention, SUNY uh, OER um, adoption is a big initiative for SUNY, and um, actually for the state of New York as well. The state of New York has put a lot of money into uh, helping CUNY and SUNY campuses uh, work with their faculty to adopt OER materials. Uh, so uh, the OER services uh, site is just at oer.suny.edu. What I will mostly be looking at for the workshop today is their open textbook library. Um, as Wayne mentioned, uh, OER services has a partnership uh, with Lumen Learning to uh, make their 
catalog of openly licensed texts available um, to all SUNY students. And normally those uh, openly licensed textbooks would actually be uh, $15 uh, you know, to use for the students, but through the partnership, SUNY's basically picking up the tab and all of the Lumen Learning Library is free for you to adopt for your classes uh, without students having to pay even that you know, $15 charge. Same thing with Carnegie Mellon. Uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon has been running their open learning initiative, which also creates a variety, uh, a whole library of open textbooks that can be adopted. Uh, and uh, the partnership also covers the, the cost of using those. So the, the reason why I'm focusing on this is that if we go back to this slide here, where uh, you know, kind of the first way of dipping your toe into this as a faculty member is to find something that works for your class that you can adopt without having to do a lot of work, um, these um, open textbooks are, are a good way to do that. There are some other things that are available at the uh, OER services site. Um, but let me just pop over, uh, again, it's oer.suny.edu. And if you go there, right up front, they're highlighting these uh, open textbook libraries from the two partners, Lumen Learning and, uh, uh, and Carnegie Mellon OLI. And um, you know, here's just showing all classes. Let me, I'm, I'm a science geek, so let me click on natural science. And um, you know, there, the, the library of textbooks is uh, going to be heavily geared toward your introductory courses or your you know, core sequence courses in the different majors or your uh, high enrollment general education courses. Um, you know, a lot of foundations have put money into developing these high quality uh, openly licensed textbook replacements. And so of course they're going to focus on, um, you know, those curriculum curricula where they uh, um, developing a textbook would get the most bang for the buck. And so, you know, how many hundreds of thousands of students take anatomy and physiology every year or our uh, gen bio uh, or biology one, biology two, and so forth. So uh, that's, if you look through the, you know, the existing library, you're going to find um, a lot of those, those level of courses. Uh, if you um, look at um, the courses that are involved here, courses that are marked as Candela are from the Lumen Learning Library, and they are basically just pretty much a, an openly licensed textbook. Those courses that are tagged as Waymaker uh, not only have the OER materials that would you know, provide the typical kinds of chapters you would find in a Gen Bio textbook or a second semester bio major textbook, but the Waymaker platform provides a lot of um, individualized, personalized, and adaptive learning um, platform elements that are tied to the learning outcomes for the course that um, help students actually work through the materials. It's more than, Waymaker is essentially more than just a textbook. And I actually will show off the Geology Waymaker textbook uh, to give you a, a feel for that. The other kind of uh, option for the Lumen Learning um, Catalog, uh, catalog uh, the Lumen Learning Library is are the OHM uh, texts, and these are OHM stands for Online Homework Manager, and so courses that are tagged as uh, as OHM have the kinds of uh, homework um, banks and resources and and practice exercises and so forth that you would expect to find in an online homework uh, manager. The other option, and this is a more recent partnership, is the uh, Carnegie Mellon o Open Learning Initiative. And so you will see some of these open textbooks 
uh, tagged as OLI. Now the the SUNY OER site um, tags these as ready to adopt courses, which I'm cringe at a little bit because these are basically open textbooks um, and you know I try to work with faculty about thinking about designing their course and then picking the text and other materials to meet the learning outcomes and, and activities of the course but um, but that's the that's the marketing you'll see here at um, at uh, OER services site so if we pick one of these like um, my uh, geology here. If you click on the panel for the particular text, you'll be taken to a, um, a landing page for this uh, textbook. The, uh, and this is actually not the, the main OER textbook I use for my geology course, but it's what's available in the Lumen um, library. And you would see, uh, you know, some promo materials uh, available at no cost to SUNY students. You can preview the course content and you will see that um, it's essentially um, um, Pressbooks platform. It's a, a, a publishing platform for these openly licensed materials and you know module one the science of geology uh, module two rock forming minerals so this is the you know the kind of materials that I would expect to find in an introductory geology textbook you can um, you know you can preview the readings you can see what um, you know what's involved the um, the text, the the images, and so forth, uh, kinds of materials that you would expect to find in um, you know um, polished textbook uh, for the different for the area involved. This is uh, currently formatted for display on the web, so you know it doesn't quite have the look and feel necessarily of a printed textbook, but uh, I mean. Take my word for it, all of the content on rock forming minerals that I would expect my sophomore level students to go through is, is there in the, in the course. So uh, let me just pop back into, um, so yeah, anything, as I said, that is tagged as Candela is basically just the equivalent of an open openly licensed OER textbook that you could you could adopt as a supplement or as a replacement for your course. And again, this is a very easy way for faculty to get um, into uh, using OER materials. Um, instead of picking a commercial textbook that you know has a certain cost and licensing structure around it, you can adopt an open textbook. And go about building your course uh, just in the same kind of approach you would have used before you adopted that open textbook. Um, what I want to take a little bit of time today though on is to actually talk about the Waymaker platform from Lumen in particular to show you a little bit how it goes beyond just uh, adopting an openly licensed textbook. So if we pop into, um, if, if you were interested, let me just go back and say, if you were interested in just a straight out adoption of one of these texts, whether it's from Lumen Learning or from um, the Open Learning Initiative, we would basically reach out to um, SUNY OER services and say, we've got another faculty member who wants to adopt one of the uh, catalogs. They would create a course cartridge that we could basically import into our Moodle system. And for the Geology Waymaker course, if I you know, download that course cartridge from OER services and uh, import it into a Moodle course shell, you basically have 
Um, it unpacks as all of these different resources and activities that you can arrange in your Moodle course. Um, so I want to unpack uh, uh, this in a little bit, but Marie, I see there's been a bunch of activity in the chat that I'm not um, following because I'm screen sharing. Is there anything that um, I should address at this point? No, it was just more about where is the link and uh, how okay. to get to it. Okay. So these uh, items that unpack out of the course cartridge, they look like they are Moodle page resources or Moodle quizzes. Um, um, uh, Moodle assignments, but these are all actually LTI external tool activities that have just kind of taken on the icon of the Moodle, um, corresponding Moodle resource or activity. And all of these are essentially links out to um, the either the materials or the activities that are structured on the um, in the Lumen Learning Library. Now, um, you can wrap around, uh, you can use as many or as few of these uh, items that get unpacked from the course cartridge as you want. You can pack your own um, resources around. So if we actually go into my, my real fall geology course, you can see that most of what I've got in my Moodle course here is stuff that I've put together over the years and uh, have developed. But I um, wanted to use the Lumen Library geology text as supplemental materials. So you can see that when we get down to some of these sections, um, I've got some of the materials that I've put together. I've got my um, reading materials that are uh, outside of this textbook. I've got the, you know, uh, reading readiness quiz that I put together, but I also have um, pulled out of the cartridge the uh, study plan for rock forming minerals and the, um, the self check quiz uh, from the Lumen Learning cartridge and just in, you know, incorporated them right among all of the other resources and activities that I have put together for my course. Same thing here under the rock cycle. I've got, uh, you know, the readings and resources in my rock cycle presentations, but I have pulled up the study plan and the uh, quiz from the Lumen Waymaker material to, you know, just uh, combine into what I'm already putting together for my course. So, um, so it's nice and flexible that way. Um, just to show you a little bit why the Waymaker texts go beyond just a, an open textbook, they have these study plans. And I'm not going to take the time to go in, in a student view, but if I click here in to look at the study plan for this kind of very introductory um, unit on, you know, what is geology about. The structure of the study plans are fairly consistent from topic to topic within your Lumen Waymaker cartridge. There would be a, uh, an initial um, introduction to talk about why this topic is important, how it fits into the course, how, you know, why students should be interested in it. The study plans all have a show what you know quiz that is tied to the learning outcomes that have been de de uh, developed for this Waymaker course. Students take this before they actually go through the material and based on the questions they get right and wrong in this show what you know, students will get some feedback to say, you know, you know, what is geology might turn, might have a little green saying, you know, you, you can go through this, but you, you basically passed all the, all the questions. Whereas here, you know, there were some uh, concepts in the show what you know uh, pre-test that you missed. So you might want to really kind of focus in on these topics when you're going through this section of material and, and so forth. And then 
each of these study plans is uh, has kind of a let's bring everything together section and then a um, post material quiz that is more summative. I mean, this is all this show what you know pre quiz is more of a formative. Let's look and see where you're strong and where you're not strong and give you some feedback. And then, uh, you know, these quiz results, as well as the actual um, uh, the actual um, quiz that that comes in the cartridge would be where you would you know kind of figure out how well the students had gone through that material um, so uh, again um, let me just I won't go into this in great detail but you can go into these waymaker materials and do some basic editing so if I edit this show what you know, pre-quiz, I can look and see what the quiz bank is and I can, you know, adjust the, the terminology or phrasing. But all of the questions in this show what you know it are, are attached to specific learning outcomes. And so if I go to, into actually edit a question, it will show you not only what kind of a question it is, but what outcome and sub outcome is this question tied to? So if the student gets this question right or wrong, it gives the Waymaker platform some indication as to the student's strength in the area related to these outcomes and sub outcomes. So under the outcome for defining the science of geology, there are a couple of sub outcomes you know, describe geology, identify the main branches of geology. So there would be questions that would be attached in the show what you know to each of these sub outcomes. Students would get a random collection of them when they do the show what you know, and then they would get that feedback um, as to what areas they probably want to concentrate more on studying and what areas where they're already in pretty good shape and can more just kind of skim through. Um, so the last thing about the Waymaker before I go on and talk about some of the others is that um, there are um, faculty tools as well. You can go in and set up a community. You can set up the Waymaker platform to automatically provide certain uh, feedback to students, email messages. Uh, they will say that they're coming from you, but you know you probably want to tell fac uh, your students. You know these are automated responses. I've set this platform up so that when you're taking these, going through these activities, you'll get feedback. It will look like it's coming from me, but I'm really not up at 3:30 in the morning uh, emailing you uh, results back. Students still. Um, engage quite a lot with those automated uh, communications. There is uh, a dashboard where you can see, you know, what students have done well, what students have struggled on the different study plans, and you can take actions to, again, to support, you know, student success in your course uh, by making use of the, the uh, Waymaker faculty tools. Um, Okay, so um, again, I mean, the main points here are that I would, for those of you who are just thinking about what's the easiest way to get in here and begin to think about adopting openly licensed materials, I would, uh, and, and if you're dealing with one of these typically high enrollment courses, I would direct you to uh, you know the SUNY OER services libraries from Lumen Learning and OLI, and uh, see if there's already uh, a textbook available for that you can adopt there. And if it's a Waymaker textbook, you not only get the text, but you get all of these student support um, services as well. Um, I haven't done. Uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon OLI uh, course myself. Uh, they didn't have a uh, G 
geology textbook when I was doing geology last fall. But I will just say that there we have added a um, we have added a SUNY OLI um, activity in in Moodle, and you can add that to your Moodle course. The approach is a little bit different with the OLI courses. You have the ability to set up a dashboard at the uh, Open Learning Initiative where you can mix and match materials from you know whatever relevant uh, textbooks they've developed, and those. Uh, materials typically come with adaptive assessments attached to them and you can uh, you know use your dashboard connection to uh, put together you know basically a learning learning packet if you find uh, an OLI course on the um, OLI services site again we would want to work through uh, um, SUNY OER services to get the uh, course cartridges put together so that you can import those materials into your Moodle course, kind of comparable to the Candela or the Waymaker um, courses there. Okay, um, just to quickly wrap things up, um, I will say that there are other open textbook sites. I won't take the time to go to them, but uh, the geology open textbook that I actually used for my geology course last fall, I actually found at the uh, BC campus open ed site. There are a lot of OpenStax materials, which I assume uh, Wayne and Patrick, uh, you must have all of the OpenStax library in the Follett Discover platform as well. Yes, uh, I believe that's the case. Yeah. Um, I know uh, I've I had some emails back and forth with Pat who's on the call. She has actually found a, um, a textbook that was developed at uh, UMass. Um, basically, this is a faculty project, I assume, um, at uh, University UMass Amherst, where the, they maintain their own press book site and, and faculty can, you know, develop um, openly licensed materials. You can see the table of contents uh, for this textbook, and so Pat's interested in using that for her course here. This textbook can be downloaded in you know, a variety of formats. Uh, can be, um, you can download a PDF, and that PDF is yours to use, as well as your students, and there's no reason why you can't just put the whole PDF up in your course. You might want to wrap the perusal annotation tools that we have in Moodle now around that so you can um, design course reading and annotation assignments. But um, I haven't heard back from Pat yet, but I suggested that if uh, she's interested, we could spin up a Pressbooks site and download the Pressbooks content from UMass here imported into our Pressbook site and give her rights to modify and repurpose the materials because she's interested in in editing. And I hope I haven't put you on the spot by, by mentioning that, uh, Pat. Not at all, Keith. That was helpful. Yep. Thank you. So uh, just a couple of things to finish off. I mean, these what I've focused on has mostly been um, finding Adapting, uh, uh, adopting and adapting existing textbooks that are openly licensed. I will just point out that there is a tool um, that is also available through OER services link site. This was developed at um, Geneseo, SUNY Geneseo, um, which uh, provides another location where you can search for openly licensed materials, whether it's textbooks, courses, course materials, interactive simulations, audiobooks, modules, open access books, and so forth, learning objects. Um, you know, Wayne also mentioned already that they have, um, or the examples he pulled up were actually uh, learning objects that, that um, that Follett Discover Platform has incorporated in from the uh, Merlot Learning Object Repository site. So there are you know sites like that, and and you know whether it's Follett Discover or the Oasis platform, a big part of of what uh, we need to think about as faculty is 
you know, what are the what are the tools that will allow us to find either whole textbooks or bits and pieces that we want to combine back together to support the learning needs of our students. And I guess I will just finish off by saying, as you as faculty are working through that, remember your library liaisons because they are here to help you to do that. Um, you know, there is the list of liaison library uh, li liaison librarians for the different subjects that are, that are available on the um, library website. Um, and, you know, whichever department you're in, you're probably hopefully already uh, in working uh, closely with your uh, subject area liaison. Uh, the library has also put together a, uh, a libguide on OER materials, and so you might want to take a look at that. Uh, under this uh, Finding OER tab are a number of the um, uh, where to search, and um, we, we need to add Follett Discover to the list here. Um, but, you know, the, certainly the SUNY OER catalog, OpenStax, Lumen, Merlot, um, BC Campus. Uh, some of these are places where you can find textbooks. Others are places where you can find, you know, individual learning objects that are openly licensed that you could use for your course. And with that, I think I will stop sharing. And um, see what questions I might need to address. So, uh, you know, Maria, Maria's responded to you about adopting on your own. You certainly can do that. Um, the biggest issue that I have as, uh, both, well, actually, I should say both Nicole Hellruggel and I are the official uh, OER campus liaisons for o uh, SUNY OER services. Uh, I've been doing that for a long time, but hopefully, uh, um, helpfully now, uh, Nicole is also in the mix so that um, you don't have to wait on my limited time. But one of the biggest issues we have in um, trying to understand how we're doing with OER services, uh, OER adoption on campus is that we don't have any central mechanism to identify courses that are using o openly licensed materials. It's not like when the fall course schedule comes around and when departments are putting in, here are the sections that we're going to offer in the fall, here are the sections we're going to offer in the spring. We have no campus-wide mechanism for, you know, collecting the data as to which of those sections are actually making use of openly licensed materials. So periodically I send an email out to faculty pleading if you're using OER materials, you know, let us know. But uh, you know, if you are interested in using uh, OER materials, whether it's a textbook or you're interested in finding, you've got some part of your course where you think that your students could make use of some additional resources and you'd like to have that be openly licensed materials so that you can incorporate it and make it freely available to your students. A, work with your library liaisons. B, you know, let Nicole and I know that you're interested in, in, in what level of using OER materials so that we can uh, not only help you and, and connect you to uh, the people at, at SUNY OER services or your, your librarians can maybe help you work through searching for materials on Follett Discover platform. Uh, but that we can uh, we can begin to better understand you know which faculty are using openly licensed material because you know it it's nice not to think that you're a lone voice out in the wilderness as faculty members right the more we know who is using openly licensed materials the more we can bring that community together to support each other. So I would encourage you, if you are interested in using openly licensed materials, to definitely talk with your librarian, but also uh, keep Nicole and I in the loop as well. Uh, Marie, I, I didn't scroll through all of the chat. Were there other questions that? Um, oh. There was a question from, oh, go ahead, Pat. 
Okay. So um, I had asked when I clicked on um, Bollett and went to OER and looked in my area of gender, what they gave was, I mean, there was a lot, but I couldn't really tell what it was. It was just a summary. And then the only option just seemed to be to adopt it. Is there some way like with other OER that you can actually see it before you say, okay, I want this? So, so Wayne, yeah, you, should, you should be able to, uh, there, I think right below it on the, on, on whatever the icon, sometimes there's a picture or there's a, uh, there's a, 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 you know, an image or, or an IMG is just, just that, that, that's attached to that item underneath it. There's some, there's a link. Usually this is access the content. Oh, let me see. Um, okay. Yes. And that Thank should take you. you right to it so you can review it from, from, from top to bottom, beginning and end. Thank you, Wayne. Yep. You got it. Okay. Uh, I mean, are there any other questions? I think be, we're, we're a small enough group that if people want to, you know, turn their mic on and ask questions, uh, we can handle it that way, or um, we can look at questions in the chat. Okay. Well, uh, again, um, Thank you all for coming this afternoon. Um, clearly, uh, I, I obviously think that helping faculty to adopt um, vetted high quality OER materials can play a big role in our attempts to develop a curriculum that is inclusive and supports equity uh, and, su and success among our students. So I thank you all for being here. And again, if you've got any questions, uh, go to the bookstore, go to your uh, uh, subject area liaisons, come to Nicole and I to ask about um, how we can help you um, adopt. And then down the road, maybe think about adapting and then, you know, if you're really um, ambitious, we can get you set up to build uh, from from scratch. Keith, can I make one one? Sure. One? I just ask if if you're adopting OER, no matter what the source is, to let the bookstore know because we're required to keep a list yes. for access. So even if you just send an email to Cairo or to me um, and let us know what you're doing, we can update. You don't have to go through follow up discover, but we, it's good for us to know because students do check our site to see what what, what they have to get. Right, and, and we have federal reporting requirements as well, right? So. Well, yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to go down yeah. that road. I mean, there's yeah. also deadlines. We're supposed to get textbooks in, and you know, uh, uh, yeah. Let's not even talk about. That. Yeah, but it, I mean, we're if we're looking at uh, you know providing services to our students, the more information we can provide uh, on the bookstore site in Moodle, uh, you know, the better we can can direct them to the materials that we want them to work with to be able to work through the learning activities for our courses. So with that, uh, I will stop the recording.